Stephen Fry is under investigation for committing blasphemy in Ireland. It's over comments he made during an interview on the TV show The Meaning of Life when asked what he would say to God. He referenced bone cancer in children, suggested uh, that revealed that perhaps uh, the creator of the universe was an utter maniac and uh, totally selfish. Um, a viewer complained under Ireland's blasphemy law, which was passed in 2009, making it the only country in the developed world to have introduced this type of legislation this century. Joining us now to discuss this from Monaghan in Ireland is John Hamill, an anti-blasphemy law campaigner from Atheist Ireland, uh, and from Oxford, the history professor at Oxford Brookes University, David Nash. Uh, thank you both for being with us. Um, professor Nash, to you first. Um, in a sense, uh, we're perhaps getting slightly ahead of ourselves. The Guardi, if the, a complaint is made to them, uh, do have to investigate. But it, it does seem slightly strange that this was a, a law introduced only in 2009. It has a feel of another time, doesn't it? Oh, it, it certainly does, and it's very anomalous because most uh, other European countries who have blasphemy laws, or rather had blasphemy laws, uh, had had them for many centuries, and the 20th century was really uh, the period when these were uh, liberalised and eventually got rid of. So it really is quite a surprise to suddenly see a new law created in 2009, almost from nothing. Uh, but Professor Nash, you could also equally say it was something of a surprise uh, that the question was ever asked, that the opportunity was given to Stephen Fry to give these comments. Working in broadcast, I understand as well as, as pretty much anyone else, that the limitations, the framework within which you have to operate, RTE must surely have been aware of it. Uh, that's possible, but obviously what uh, uh, has happened is that Ireland, just like many other countries in the modern world, has no real experience of, of operating uh, a blasphemy law. And to an extent, if you do, uh, you don't hear about it because it's just matters of self-censorship that happen under the radar and uh, you're not aware of uh, in the broadcast media because uh, I'm certainly aware of instances where people have said, please, you simply cannot say that on air. Uh, well, John Hamill, on that point, I mean, uh, how often has this uh, law been deployed? I mean, how much is freedom of expression in Ireland limited uh, by this particular piece of statute? Well, it's a good question because in terms of prosecutions, uh, I think the ongoing prosecution of Stephen Fry, while uh, entirely ridiculous, it's the, the first prosecution taken under uh, the blasphemy provision within the 2009 Defamation Act. Uh, but largely, as you say, uh, the, the effects of the law relate not just to prosecutions, but also the chilling effect that you just described. So RTE has censored many sketch shows in the past, for example, and, and withdrawn particular sketches for being blasphemous. Um, and I've had uh, articles that were uh, asked to be written by Irish newspapers, which have been withdrawn because some of the contents uh, are deemed to be blasphemous. Uh, the last time I was asked to write a, a, an article about Marian operations, which unfortunately are still quite popular here in Ireland, uh, I referred to Mary as a carpenter's wife, and the uh, editor refused to print the article on the basis uh, that that was blasphemous and we could be prosecuted. So the idea that uh, the omnipotent creator of the universe needs a handful of Irish legislators to create laws in order to save him from his beings being hurt um, is of course uh, extremely uh, ridiculous, but the, uh, I should say also that the, the dangers of the law don't just relate to the chilling effect. So in 2009, Pakistan proposed exactly verbatim the wording of the Irish legislation to the United Nations um, as a proposal for the Human Rights Council. Um, now in Pakistan, the punishment for blasphemy is death. Uh, there's a lady called Asya Bibi who's still on death row in Pakistan waiting to be executed for blasphemy. So uh, it's really quite difficult for Western countries to campaign uh, for people like Asya Bibi and campaign against the death penalty for blasphemy if at the same time we are introducing our own blasphemy laws. Um, Professor Nash, uh, it's my understanding that the, the, the confidence supply government that exists in, in Ireland at the moment actually has promised to bring forward a referendum so that there at least appears to be some uh, popular support uh, for the repeal of this. Is that, is that correct? Yes, that is correct because the uh, Constitutional Convention of uh, a couple of years ago uh, voted uh, 
uh, well, overwhelmingly, in the region of 80 to 85 percent, that Ireland's blasphemy law should in some manner be transformed into a law against incitement to religious hatred. And certainly this is what uh, every other uh, Western country has effectively done. Uh, blasphemy is seen as something that regulates opinion, uh, but obviously laws against incitement to religious hatred are much more uh, designed to regulate against uh, uh, breaches of, of public order and, and um, uh, actual physical acts. A, a brief question to, to both of you, in fact, and a, a brief response if possible. Um, John Hamill, to you first. Do we think that ultimately, uh, once the Guardian have completed their investigation, this will actually go anywhere? Uh, well, from my perspective, I very much welcome the uh, investigation, and I hope the prosecution proceeds, uh, because I think that's the, way, the, the best way to highlight how ridiculous the law is. Um, on, on one level, the, the, the Guardian here have received some criticism for pursuing this case, but it's not up to the guards to decide which laws are ridiculous and which laws are sensible. I think the blame lies with our parliamentarians for legislating in this way. Uh, Professor Nash, um, should Stephen Fry be preparing for a spell and clink? Um, I'm not entirely sure about that because one of the other aspects of the law is so many um, clauses within it are incredibly badly framed. Uh, for example, it's suggested that what's said has to be grossly abusive. And there's no real legal text of what's sort of grossly abusive as opposed to mildly abusive. Likewise, the law requires an element of outrage. And again, that's not properly defined either. But I suppose that the big thing that has really uh, uh, existed within blasphemy laws almost since time immemorial is the fact that it's very difficult to prove someone's intention. Uh, and the Irish law actually says that the individual has to intend to cause such outrage. Uh, and as many legal commentators will tell you, this is looking into the mind of people accused and saying that they intend absolutely all the subsequent consequences of what they say. Uh, could Stephen Fry legitimately have uh, uh, envisaged this was ha this would happen? The law says he would he would have to have envisaged this, and and I think certainly if this goes any further, there will be some extremely interesting legal arguments aired in court. Uh, David Nash, John Hamill, thanks both for joining us on Sky News this lunchtime. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.